This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Alright, so I know this video topic could be the subject to a lot of hate, but it's still very much something that should be covered extensively. Information is your greatest weapon in any form of competitive game, and Yu-Gi-Oh! is no different from that. Regardless of if you like or dislike the Grinder Golem shenanigans going on recently, the fact remains that as we transition into 2018 Yu-Gi-Oh!, Grinder Golem is going to become more and more a part of Yu-Gi-Oh! as the year progresses. And knowing what to expect and how to make best use of easy counters is going to be a huge factor in your Yu-Gi-Oh! success as 2018 unfolds. Whether you love it or hate it, 2018 has the potential to be filled with Grinder Golem innovations as there's already good Grinder combos available as soon as Extreme Force drops in January. So knowing the counters discussed in this video, as well as others, could be of huge benefit to you and greatly worth your while. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's get straight into it, I guess. So, Grinder Golem. Unless you've been living under a rock with no internet for the last two to three months, chances are you have at least heard someone talking about or bitching about Grinder Golem. Grinder Golem is an older card that was never really that good until recently with the advancement of Link Summoning into the game. Now, I expect most of you who play online Yu-Gi-Oh, especially on Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, to know the most basic OCG version of the Grinder Golem combo that's all over Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, no matter where you go. But just in case you don't, it's very simple. You special Grinder Golem to your opponent's field, specifically above one of the extra monster zones, getting your two tokens to your field. You make the tokens into Link Spider and Link Karibo, and then make those into Akashic Magician under the Grinder Golem. Akashic bounces the Golem with her effect, and then you special summon it again for two more tokens. Those tokens become the OCG card Security Dragon, which can bounce Grinder Golem again. You then summon the Golem again for two more tokens. Those tokens combine with a Security Dragon for a Firewall Dragon, which, yet again, bounces the Golem. You again special summon it for two more tokens, and from here you have quite a few options depending on your deck and the ideas of plays you want to do. But a common way to end this combo is to use the two tokens with a Akashic Magician to make a second Firewall Dragon and then start special summoning cards from your hand with their effects to continue your turn. All in all, it's a very powerful one card combo that gives you not really a huge amount of advantage in terms of card economy, but it does give you a very moldable starting play that unlocks some of the really broken extra deck cards for you with little actual investment or effort on your part. All at the cost of not being able to normal summon for the turn. Now, Security Dragon at the moment is an OCG exclusive, we will get it sometime in the future, but Grinder is capable of many other lesser plays that can be just as impactful on the game that will develop starting with the releases in Extreme Force, and will basically be building upon those as the year progresses, until we eventually get Security Dragon. Now, as you would expect, people are shouting to the rooftops about how they want Grinder Golem banned, or how they can't wait for it to be banned. Meanwhile, in the OCG, Grinder Golem is getting tons of positive attention from the Japanese Konami branch because it is truly the first card that is really actively pushing Link Summoning out to the game in a generic sense. Rather than being a very specific deck like Spiral or World Chalice, Golem can be played in every deck giving every deck the ability to Link Summon in a very economical way. That's pushing the mechanic for Konami, which is making them money, which at the end of the day is their bottom line. So, while it could get outright banned, I personally am doubtful it will ever be really heavily hit anytime soon. The most recent OCG ban list for January 1st, 2018 has just been announced, and on that list, Grinder Golem went to 2, just as a small hit to curb its performance. But overall, it does not kill the card's potential at all, it doesn't kill the combos, and if Konami wanted to heavily hit the card, they easily could have done it at this point. But it's very clear that they really just enjoy what the card is doing for every other deck in the format that isn't a Link-centric deck already. Now you may be saying, but they hit Gofu, so they have no reason not to ban or limit Grinder Golem. And well, you're both right and wrong. Golem and Gofu are both very similar, arguably there are no two more similar cards in the game currently, but between the two they are also both very different. The differences in these cards boil down to their individual versatilities and vulnerabilities. Gofu is a completely different beast from Golem. It isn't really directly countered by any hand traps. Well, you can Valor the tokens, but is that really ideal? Nah, 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 it's not. You, know, you don't really want to be wasting an effect Valor on a Gofu that's just generating tokens. But it also doesn't make you forfeit anything. You keep your normal summon for the turn, and you don't have to dedicate 5 cards at minimum from your extra deck into any of your Gofu combos. 
Gofu is also a tuner, which means abuse with the Crystron Link monster as an option for more Link materials that utilize the same basic principles of the Grinder Golem combos, just in a different way. If Gofu does get countered, you just continue playing your deck as usual, and you don't gain any restrictions off using the Gofu. You can still normal summon. In terms of versatility and vulnerability, Gofu is vastly superior to Golem in both categories. It is both more versatile and requires less from you, and it's also less vulnerable overall. This is why Gofu is hit to 1 on both the TCG and OCG lists. Grinder Golem, as I already mentioned, requires at least a third of your extra deck to perform the most basic combo, and also makes you give up your normal summon for the turn. Which in some decks, the normal summon triggered effects are the most broken ones, and those get shut out by your Grinder Golem. The Grinder Golem combos are also much more counterable than Gofu is. Obviously, if you go second, you have to deal with the potential real trap cards like Solemn Strike, but even going first against only the potential of hand traps, Golem is much more counterable than Gofu combos are. There are two very good hand traps that directly counter Golem that are also greatly beneficial to you as the player countering Golem. You have Ghost Ogre and Effect Veiler that both completely stop the Golem combo in its tracks and put you in a fantastic position over your opponent. There's even a third hand trap that I can't recall the name of and I can't find it that lets you discard it to move your opponent's monster to a different zone. And even that directly counters the golem combos, so there's in theory 9 copies of cards you could be playing as only hand traps to counter golem. But specifically talking about Ogre and Veiler, with Ogre all you need to do is simply not let Akashic Magician resolve to bounce golem, it's very simple. Akashic Magician will be summoned, activate its effect to try and bounce what it points to, which is Grinder Golem, and at that point you will Ghost Ogre the Akashic Magician, which will resolve before Akashic bounces. Now Akashic's effect is not negated. However, it is no longer on the field when it resolves, and therefore, it does not point to anything. Golem stays on your field, and now your opponent cannot use Akashic Magician to bounce it because Akashic is a hard once per turn effect, and the most they could do is go into some extra play with Link Spider or Link Karibo and Security Dragon, but that requires a second Golem in their hand to even make any plays because they cannot perform any normal summons. With Veiler it gets a little bit more complex as you can either Veiler Akashic Magician or wait and Veiler something later in the structure to hit something that's a little bit more key, like if you want to Veiler their Security Dragon to make them waste more cards or something like that. But at any point if you Veiler you stop your opponent's play and again, a second Grinder Golem is needed to even continue plays, or some sort of card that just freely special summons itself is required to even try and play out the rest of their turn, because they have no normal summon. You have a potential six hand traps that you can play that are very good overall, and hard counter the Golem combos. And your opponent can only counter your hand trap by drawing a duplicate Grinder Golem. So they have to draw either a 2 of a 3 of, or a 2 of a 2 of now in the new OCG format, to counter you drawing one of a potential 6 of that you could be playing. The odds are very in your favor, in terms of dealing with Golem via hand traps. I've talked to a lot of players who've wanted Golem banned, and of those players, a lot of them also did not understand the Ghost Ogre interaction with Akashic Magician. It's something that you may not understand just straight out of the blue, that it no longer points to a card, so it technically is sort of like negating its effect. I can understand getting frustrated with a card and thinking it's way too powerful for the game, but you would also benefit greatly from looking at key points of a card or combo and figuring out what commonly playable cards or what good playable cards can directly counter that card or combo. You can control your fun levels against a Grinder Golem combo way before Konami intervention with a ban list. You're going to have a lot more fun if you're just playing Ogres and Veilers and you just stop their combo and you have more unlocked extra monster zones potentially because of the Akashic Magician, but also have a Grinder Golem being a Link Material or just a 3000 Beater on your side of the field. You're going to have a lot more fun with it if you just start playing cards that counter it rather than waiting for Konami to just ban the card. But so earlier I said Grinder Golem plays will be available as soon as 2018 starts with Extreme Forces release. Many players are expecting not to see Grinder Golem play until Security Dragon gets imported from the OCG, which will probably be later in 2018. But in reality, once Extreme Force drops, Grinder Golem is already a one card Curious the Light Sworn Dominion. This gives a huge boost to any deck in that format that wants to mill a key card, or just a mill deck in general, like Zombie Swarms or Infernoids or something like that. This combo is fairly easy to execute, as well as requiring minimal steps. You special Grinder Golem and your tokens, again with Golem over an extra monster zone specifically, link the tokens into Link Spider and Link Karibo, and then link those into Akashic Magician. Akashic Magician will bounce the Golem that it points to, and then you summon it again to get two more tokens. 
You then tribute a token to special summon the Link Karibo from your graveyard with its own effect, and from there you have three dark monsters all with different types on your field, which can combine into Curious the Lightsworn Dominion. This triggers its on summon effect to send a card from deck to grave, and then that effect triggers its secondary effect to mill three cards. This can be a huge asset towards making decks into competitively viable strategies, as I've already touched upon. So straight into 2018 we have the potential for Grinder Golem to start being a broken card, and we have inevitable innovation for the card as the year progresses. So get ready and get educated to start dealing with it in effective manners, and that will ensure your success in the 2018 Yu-Gi-Oh! year, and you'll start having a lot more fun with the game, rather than just getting irritated because you just keep getting bodied by Grinder Golem as a one card card that practically beats your entire strategy by putting out Firewall Dragons. It's very easy for you to start countering the card, start countering the combos, and that really heavily punishes your opponent. You'll have much more fun and much more success in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! when that starts happening and when you start taking those steps. So anyway, that's basically it for this video. Those are the points I wanted to touch upon. That's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about Grinder Golem in depth and explain why it is a pretty different card. It's much more vulnerable of a card than people are really giving it credit for, and that's just something that needed to really be addressed. So, other than that, as always guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links is always in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've done and you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support, and you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you'd like to do. But otherwise, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. So now the video is over, as usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, way more than I could ever express. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.